for the Supta Karmasana position. This is putting the leg behind the head. So if you want to follow along, you can come and you sit on your yoga mat. You're going to bring your legs out in front of you with the feet kind of separated like this. Sides of the feet are on the floor. The, the feet are flexed and your knees are a little bit away from the floor. So we're not going into our, just letting our legs fall. There's a little bit of action to press the outer edge of the feet into the floor so that the knees stay up a little bit. Then we're gonna take our hands and we're just going to slide the skin of the buttocks down just a little bit towards the backs of the knees. Then you start to tilt forward. Now as you tilt forward, you're going to see maybe you can place your hands in front of you on the mat and stay something like this. If you have a little more flexibility available, then you can wiggle your hands forward, maybe hold on to your feet and just let the head come down or take a block and place your forehead on the block. something like that or if you still have some more flexibility available then you walk a little bit further and eventually you're trying to get the toes on the inner elbows and then placing the head down so find the position that is most comfortable for you and then we're gonna stay here just for a few breaths to try to relax the area of the buttocks, the backs of the legs, the sides of the legs, the lower back, this whole area that we need to feel lengthening in all the Supta Karmasana versions. Okay, then we're going to walk ourselves back up to a sitting position. Take the legs out in front of you and shaking them out. So the next exercise we're going to do is with one leg at a time. So you come to sit with your legs out in front of you and then you're going to bend one knee. Let's all start with the right knee. Take behind your thigh and pull the knee in towards yourself. Then change the hands and see if you can get your foot. Now, I need my knee to angle out a little bit. So I'm not going to keep the knee coming straight towards me. I'm going to externally rotate slightly in the hip joint so that my knee is pointing kind of just grazing the outside of my, my shoulder. So I'm not doing this either. Okay, just a little bit outwards. Then I'm going to take my same arm as that leg and I'm going to see if I can bring it under the leg. So if we get stuck here, we just sit, we relax, and we breathe here. If we have the flexibility, we can press the knee back a little further and then we take our arm, straighten at the elbow and we're pushing this arm out to the side and we're going to glue that hand down to the yoga mat. And actually, just before doing that, take your hand to the sitting bone skin and just anchor the sitting bone skin, okay, so that you feel like the sitting bone skin is coming up a little bit towards the back of the knee. It's not stuck on the mat. Then, hand out, glue that hand to the yoga mat or the floor, take your other hand over hand over the top of the foot, and then from there, maybe you start to straighten out the leg. Okay, you just stop wherever it feels like a nice stretch for you without overdoing it. If you go a little further, eventually you straighten the leg, rotate from the spine, and turn and gaze upwards over the left shoulder. Just 
Take a couple of breaths here, deep Ujjayi breathing. And then releasing. Straightening that leg out. Lift the sitting bones. Let the skin fall down naturally. We're going to do the second side. So interlacing behind the thigh, pulling the knee towards you, then taking the foot. Now start to externally rotate from the hip joint so the knee is pointing a little bit to the outside. Bringing, keep pressing that knee back, bringing the arm in front. And then from here, you can just get that sitting bone skin and anchor it to the back of your, your knee. Then see if you can go a little further. Just stop wherever you need to. Straighten that left arm. Reach it back. Glue it to the floor. Then change the upper hand so it's overhand. And then slowly, just working breath by breath. Perhaps we stop here. If you have still some flexibility available, maybe you work on straightening that leg, opening the chest, and rotating towards the right. Finding a point to gaze at, and breathing. So if you're having trouble breathing smoothly, it means you're going a little bit too far. And then slowly releasing out of that position. You can bring your hands behind you, shake out the legs a little bit. Okay, so the next part we're going to do is lying next to a wall. Okay, because when we, we're going to put our back on the floor and our legs up, and we're going to use the gravity to help us find some flexibility in our hip joints. So you come uh, close to the wall, and then you swivel, and you lie down. You have something in your hair, you need to remove it. And then maybe you wiggle yourself a little bit closer. You don't need to be completely touching the wall. You can stay like 10 centimeters or so away from the wall. Now, we're going to walk our feet a little bit up the wall. So basically what I'm trying to do is I'm going to have a rounded back because the tortoise, tortoise pose, this is a turtle, so it's got a round back. So this is fine if you have a healthy spine. Now I want to see if I can keep my pelvis somewhat level and then I'm going to externally rotate my right leg from the hip joint so you see the knee and the foot follow. Then I'm going to see if I can bring my foot towards my forehead. Okay, so you're going to take your right arm and kind of lengthen the inner line of that right leg. So I'm pressing this away and then I'm letting my foot come towards my forehead. Holding it here for a couple of breaths, checking that you're not all lopsided in the pelvis, so the pelvis is still pretty much level. And the foot doesn't go over to the other side of the face. It really needs to stay towards the forehead. And then releasing that leg, placing it back up on the wall, and then externally rotating the left leg allowing the foot to come towards the forehead, using the left elbow to lengthen the inner line of that leg, and then bringing the left foot towards the forehead. Verify the pelvis isn't all torqued, keeping it pretty much level. going to do this again but a little bit differently so externally rotating from the right hip joint this time you're going to take your foot but the right arm is going to come in front of that leg so I'm going to bring my knee 
like it's almost going to touch the floor. My foot towards my forehead, and then I'm going to see, so we don't, the next step, if you're not ready for it, don't worry about it. Just stay here and relax and work on the breath and slowly melt the muscles into the pose. If you can, you can lift your head and then see if you can bring that leg behind the head. But you only do this if you don't have to torque your neck. So I'm not, I'm not doing this, right? Okay, my neck, I'm trying to keep it straight. Then maybe you hold on to your foot and then take your right arm and stretch it out to the side. If you're able to keep the head pressing into the foot, maybe you can bring the arms in front of the chest in this prayer position. Then after a couple breaths, releasing that leg, switching legs. So externally rotating the left hip, hip joint, allowing the foot to come towards you. This time bringing the left arm in front of that leg so the knee is coming towards the floor. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you can tuck your chin and bring the foot behind the head. Verify, look at yourself, see if you can notice if the neck is straight. You can keep hold of the foot and stretch the left arm out to the side. Or if you've got a good, firm position, maybe you bring the hands in front of the chest. Keep pressing the head back. So you're using the neck muscles. You're strengthening the neck muscles. You're not just letting the weight of the leg press into the back of the head. And then after a few breaths, we release. Lower the buttocks down to the floor, turn the knees, and we're going to come up to sit again. Okay, so this one's really good also. Actually, that previous one is very good for second series as well. Um, so, the next one is very similar to this except for sitting up. So, we sit with our legs straight. We're going to take the knee so that the we're swiveling in the hip joint, the right hip joint, so we're externally rotating in that hip joint, bringing both hands under to take either side of the ankle. So I like to keep my ankle straight. It's true that the ankle can articulate on its own without completely disturbing the knee, but it's sometimes I find that if I if I'm not paying 100% attention, then it can happen that it's doing a little bit of weird movements in the knee. So preferably, I think it's just on the little safer side if we keep our ankle straight. So I'm using my right arm, my right elbow, to lengthen the inner line of that right leg, just as we did in the first exercise on the back. Okay, so I'm not bringing my knee behind me. My elbow is in front of that knee. Then I'm holding my, on either side of my ankle, I'm going to lift the chest, pull in the belly, and then I'm going to bring my heel towards my forehead, not the forehead towards the heel. Right? Something different there than there. Okay, so check that you're using your elbow to press the the lower part of the femur bone in this direction. Then releasing. Lift the sitting bones, let them fall down naturally, and then externally rotate the left hip joint. Bring the foot towards you. I like to always get that buttock skin in. And there comes Lily. <laughs> so I'm going to place my elbow on the inner line of that leg. And then I'm going to lengthen the inner line. And I'm going to keep it pressing away a little bit. 
supporting either side of my ankle, and then I lift out of my waist, open the chest, and I pull the foot towards my forehead, not the forehead. This is easy, right? I can just do anything like this, but instead, so if you don't come all the way, it doesn't matter. You stay here, right? Something like that. Or if it comes, then no problem. Bring it closer. And releasing. Shake out the legs a little bit. So the, the last one I'm going to show is working a little closer to Supta Karmasana, where we use a couple of blocks. Okay. At home, if you're at home, what can be interesting is to, if you have like a chair and then a desk or um, your bed and drawers or something like this that are approximately the same level, and you can sit on one, make a space, and then put your feet on the other. This can be helpful if you have something like that at home. Otherwise, if not, we use blocks. So I place my feet on the blocks. I, again, I think it's uh, kind of useful to flex the feet. Lift the sitting bones, let the skin fall down naturally. And so the benefit here is that I have all this space, right? All that space there because my feet are lifted. So they're pretty much lifted to the place they would be if I was in Supta Karmasana. If I had both my legs behind my head, that's about high, how high they would be. So in this version then, I can lean forward and try to relax in that position. Relaxing the lower back, relaxing the buttocks, the back of the hamstrings, even the, the um, quads, the side lateral quads. Okay, so that's a good attempt. If all that is working very well for you, the last thing to do is to take one leg, right leg first, or left leg. In Ashtanga, usually we put the right leg over the left leg. I'm going to show you this way. So anchoring the sitting bone skin towards the back of your knee and then we take our foot just like what we did lying down on the wall so I'm not trying to get my head under my leg right I'm not doing it like this this is gonna put way too much strain on my neck and my upper back so instead I'm just curling kind of natural curl and then I'm putting my leg there right do you see the difference the leg goes there, and then I press my head into my leg. Okay, check that buttock skin so you don't get little hamstring tears. And then you take your second leg, and you can hold it so you keep your right hand down, take your left hand to your foot, and then I'm going to use my left arm to push that leg back, right? You see, I'm trying to push it back like this, up and I get it around the toes, and I try to clasp the feet close together. Hair things don't really work very well. And then you can see if you can up, come down. I'm going to move the blocks, actually, and come all the way down to the floor. Up. Usually you can come and sit up, but maybe this is going to be a little too much. So, good luck with that. Namaste. Thank you.